do a roll call. Um, Randy Iser, uh, Kyle, Justin Clard. Uh, we have Deborah Levinson and Kayla and Alex. Um, and I will pass the meeting over to Kyle. Uh, all right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a quick update on the survey. Uh, it has been announced and is live. Uh, last week, the August water bill uh, was mailed out on the 1st with an insert. Um, that seems to be successful. As of 5 o'clock tonight, we have already received 74 responses. Uh, so that's pretty positive, I think, for five days. Um, uh, they all the same person. Uh, hopefully but not. No, uh, I I did perhaps make a mistake of starting to read some responses this morning. Uh, a wide range of responses. I'll wait until the end to get back to that. Um, but I think pretty good participation so far. Uh, um, Alex has been helpful in promoting it through Hadley Media, created some flyers in a slide. Um, that would be- well, That stuff go up tomorrow. Now down tomorrow, okay. Yep. Uh, I have also dropped off, I I want to that. Uh, I've also dropped off physical copies uh, at three locations. So the collector's office has a small stack. Uh, and then this afternoon I dropped off some here at the senior center and also at the circulation desk at the library. Um, so um, yeah, hopefully we have um, opportunities for folks that perhaps didn't get the announcement in the mailer to either see it through Hadley Media. I think Alex, you also said social media will get. Yep, we'll be on social media tomorrow along with our channel. Awesome. The, uh, the forms that you gave it uh, left at the collector's office, are they inside the office or on the table outside? I handed them off to Kim directly, so I don't know exactly where she put them. I okay. think she was going to leave them right there. Um, the table out in the hall would be a good place as well if she hasn't done that. I, okay. I think she she put them inside the office on her desk, um, on like the desk when you walk in. But I can ask if she can move it to the outside table because um, that probably gets more traffic here, right, Randy? Or at least put some out there and leave some in, whatever, so that they can pass them along when somebody comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kim knows that if any are filled out there at the collector's office, they're going to put them directly into the planning board mailbox. Uh, and then I left envelopes with uh, Jane here at the senior center and the library has a folder just to collect them. So. Um, we drop any off at the transfer station. Uh, I did not, but that's a great idea. It's also a great place to get in touch with folks. If you can get me some, I can do that. I'm there every Saturday. Oh, that's nice. It's the uh, place to be. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Uh, I have a, a good rapport with the, the guy who runs this transfer station, so I would imagine he would be on that. Along with one of Alex's beautiful signs. <clears throat> be, be more, Randy, do you want one or does that one suffice? That should be fine. Okay. But I'll tell you what, give me a couple more just in case they get weathered. Mm. Uh, welcome, Mark. We're just wrapping up our survey update. Uh, we've already received 74 responses as of five o'clock today. Okay. We've got physical copies at the collector's office, senior center, and library. And Randy is volunteering to drop some off at the transfer station. Great. Did we already start recording and open the meeting with a roll call or anything like that? Yes, we have done that. Cool. Excellent. Um, so I think... Um, at least through Labor Day would be a good amount of time. You know, typically four solid weeks, at least for an online survey, uh, to let people know, um, and at least get around to it. 
it might get crazy here at the end of the month as the school year approaches or so. Uh, and then we have the Labor Day weekend. So I was thinking um, possibly closing it on Monday the 9th, I believe. Um, Monday the 9th of September, which is the Monday after Labor Day. That would be a solid uh, 40 days or so. I would be in favor. Thanks to me. Okay. I think we all need to just, whoever we run into, make them aware that it's out there. And see if they would pass the word along. Absolutely. Is now an appropriate time on the agenda to discuss the renter thing that we were chatting about earlier? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so it's, it sounds like uh, I had missed some of the previous meetings, but the meeting with the Affordable Trust or Affordable Housing Trust Fund, I guess, got uh, interrupted by a weather event and the topic was never discussed on whether or not we could allocate resources to send mailers out to all residents. So I just wanted to bring this up. I, I think it seems like that ship may have sailed for the survey, although we might still be able to get the word out somehow. Um, but I wanted to highlight for the, the group here that as we continue forward, um, continued exclusion of those groups might be considered uh, discrimination in some form against the poor or the working poor. So I, I wanna make sure that we as a committee can try to prioritize outreach to all residents as opposed to just landowners, which should not just improve this effort, but also ideally uh, communication and involvement across all areas of our government, which I think is sorely needed. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree. I would also say, I would say that since we've already discussed being tight on fees with P PBPC, if anyone uh, on the voting committee wanted to take on, you could take the list of mailing addresses in the town and those that got bills. Because if it's a if it's a if it's a renter, it probably didn't go to that address. So you could see the difference. You know, the addresses that didn't get the bills. Right. There, there might be. be a there may be a way of looking at the mail mail lists too, and you know if it's if it's a two line address like unit B or apartment two mm -hmm. or something like that. There's there's low hanging fruit where we could get some, but right. Um, I haven't haven't yet heard other than a mailer to every address on record. I haven't heard of a, a great way of ensuring that we reach everybody. Uh, although it sounds like Alex is here, uh, I don't know if this would be as a member of the public because you're not a member of the committee, but uh, employee of the town. Employee of the town. Okay, so. Uh, it sounds like Alex had some thoughts or suggestions on ways we might be able to accomplish that. Maybe we reach out to the school system, see if they can put in like bring it, have kids bring it home. Okay. And uh there's housing for it over there too. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um there are a lot of school choice students. I don't know if that changes things, but I think I mean the survey offers the option of choosing no if you're not a resident and so should be covered. Yeah. Anyone else want to weigh in on that? I think it's a great idea to get it to as many people as we possibly can. I mean, the whole idea in my mind of why we're doing what we're doing is to help out the the folks who can't afford to buy the six or seven or eight hundred thousand dollar house in this town right now. So yeah. the more the more diversity we can get with this uh, survey, the better off we're going to be. Yeah, that, that would be ironic if we missed the focus group. Andrew, any, any thoughts? Um, no, I mean, I think it would be great if we could reach everyone. Um, but uh, I'm not really sure it's the, the best way to reach people. Um, like, Ideally, like posting at the library or like public places would be would should suffice, but that's re like not realistic. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of I'm kind of conflicted as to how we could can reach 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 every demographic, like to get an equitable uh, answer. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, think I'm wondering if we 
since we have a list of the currently affordable, the current homes listed on our affordable housing um, inventory, would it make sense to <clears throat> duplicate copies and leave a bunch of them like at Golden Court and at um, Vesta and right? There's only about four or five. I mean, how many are there, Mark? Like five or six of these complexes. And if we could leave a bunch of them at each one of those, we would at least have, that's one form of outreach to lower income folks in our town. Yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've known of at least someone that was renting a unit there and was going to have to give it up and ended up leaving town. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know that this committee is going to solve that problem, but um, certainly something I would suggest as a town, we look at a little bit more closely. Maybe, maybe this is an agenda item we could ask the, the select <laughs> board to put on a future meeting. Well, it's the suggestion I just made something that could happen within our, our means and time frame now. Are we able to put up signs? I and mean, technically we can do whatever we I have mean, the like, means and resources to do. It's the question is whether or not it, it, it actually is an effective way of reaching yeah. everyone. You know, having been a renter in this town a number of years ago, um, I don't think I, I saw a single notice about town meetings, about, you know, postings for anything, events, like uh, everything I discovered was just, I stumbled across it, whether it was something happening on the West Street Common or a town meeting that I happened to see the, you know, a bunch of people going to the school for, like, I don't, I don't know how to solve that problem either. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of like the, the town voting signs, like how they always put out a sign for when time to vote. Um, but that those are also just kind of in select areas. Right. And kind of. Right. High traffic intersections yeah. or something, right? Yeah, I don't think there's a way we're going to get every single resident of the town, but if we can put them in places where there are a fair amount of people, like Deb's Point, Golden Court, what used to be Green Leaves, I don't know what it's called anymore, uh, but I mean, I know there's a person that lives there that's on the climate change committee that seems, I would imagine if we talk to her, she'd be willing to do whatever she can do down there. And be short of going and knocking on everybody's door in town to all the right. uh, yeah. yeah. water. But again, with the subsidized housing inventory, they are clustered and there would be only, I think, about five or six sort of drop off points or whatever. Yeah, yeah that, that's true for them, Deb. I, I think I worry about, like, I, I know because I lived there along Middle Street, there are a handful of old farmhouses that have been converted into two, three, four units or, or more. Uh, so I'm sure there's more than just that middle street section. There's probably other areas throughout town that have similar conversions. And I, or oh yeah, the rent, the oh yeah. No, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that would reach all our renters. Just as one, one approach to getting lower income folks. Right. right. Randy, do you know when the um, Hadley Public Schools start up again? When does their year start? Wednesday the 29th. Wednesday the 29th. <laughs> That's <laughs> August? Okay. I was just thinking if, the, I don't know if they start right off with their, um, don't they have a, uh, at least in the elementary school, like a, a breakfast uh, option for students that, you know, uh, are low income or at risk or something like that? That might be another angle to to hit. Those might be you know, if someone's opting into that, they might be renting. Anyway, yeah, I'm just trying to think of how we could effectively maximize our exposure. But as Randy said, we're not going to hit it every corner. So sounds like we can we can try to get as much of this out as we can connect with as many people as possible but I'd, I'd like to 
as, especially when you get into focus groups and eventually the public the larger public engagement section session. Uh, I hope by then we can have this problem at least sorted so we can reach a higher percentage of the population. Yeah. So we'll try to, Kyle, do we have a budget to print more or is that something we should approach the town to print more if we're going to get them to these other? Print more uh, announcement inserts? Um, what were you handing out at the library and the senior center? Those are physical copies of the survey. Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we wanted to put those out at, Vesta and Golden Court, and uh, I don't know what the one is behind where the old pizza hut um, used to be. Um, yeah, we can we can afford to print out copies of yeah. Okay, few, I can uh, print them out at Town Hall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Do you mean the copy of the survey or the flyer? I think we're talking about the survey itself. Right. Okay. It's three pages uh, if you do back, front and back. So it's just three pages. Okay. And how many do you think that uh, you'll need? I don't know. Do we want like 50 at each location or something like that? And Let's talk about that a little bit first. Um, my feeling is that the more paper copies you get out there, the less of them you're going to get back. Hmm. I think it, to me, it makes more sense to have a flyer that says, go to this website if you want to mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And the information will be gathered properly. The other ways, that, how are they going to get it? I mean, they're going to take it home or they're going to get it at home. They're going to fill it out. And then where do I put this thing? Yeah. So right. I, I think that's a lot of extra steps and a lot of uh, potential problems. Does the survey, it, it doesn't say this on the flyer, but does the survey online say that you can get physical copies at the library or senior center? No, I don't believe so. That might be the only the only gap there is providing providing the means and like as an as an accessibility option, for example, for somebody who might not have the capacity to do it online, some mm -hmm. way of, of telling them if you can't, you know, You're right. go here. But I agree. I think if we can put the flyer up with a QR code. Maybe a maybe a you select prints mm -hmm. just in case, and yeah. then go here if you need a physical yeah. copy. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely some locations where like having physical copies would be like advantageous, um, just because just general like generational differences. Right. What are the instructions, uh, Kyle, on the um, printed ones that you put at the library and so on? What are the what's the instruction on there for how to return them? Uh, they just they have an envelope I dropped off with the library and Jane here has an envelope for once they're completed, she's just collecting them. Oh, that's right. So they return them to where they got them. And uh, in town the hall, they, putting yeah. in the planning board mailbox. Right, right. Okay. I like that. So maybe if we have four or five different um, d um, affordable housing developments in town, maybe each one gets like 10 copies of the survey and a posted copy of the flyer. Is that what we talked about? That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Randy, for being a wise select board steward of our tax dollars. And then are we gonna, are you asking the folks at the affordable developments to return them to the library or? Yeah, we, uh, we could, we could maybe, or yeah, because is that on the flyer that they, that they're, they were co collected at those locations or? No. Yeah. You make a new one. Yeah, like one on the yeah. uh, Alex might be able to whip one up. Real yeah, quick. it might be able to make a quick uh, edit here. Yeah, hard copies will be collected at the 
library and the senior center until the following day, you know, till what, July, uh, September 9th. Yeah. One second, everyone. Great one. Okay. So, am I having? Kyle, you just started sharing. I thought I saw Deb talking, but I didn't hear. Right. I'm sorry, I was muted. I I had one more question about that. Is the is the note that you're about to change to tell people where they can return it? Is that the note that was inserted in the water bill? It was uh, the flyer was essentially the same as the notice that went out. Yeah, I pretty but, much copy and paste it. But yeah, the, the notice doesn't say anything about hard copies. Right. But what I was going to say is if it's essentially the same, one of the uh, change. I might suggest we also change because the one on the water bill still had the reference to only one half of Route 9. Even though, oh. Kyle, I know you removed it from the rest of the survey, but it was referenced in that insert. And if it's referenced on the flyer, I would suggest we take it out. And the COA and library? Yeah. Okay. That's what we put it here? Are you sure? Sure. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's on, it's on there. And then, where's my new bar? So this, is this good where, where this guy is here? I like that, yeah. Can you see it? No, yeah, no, you can't see it. Okay. We can't. Everybody, everybody out in TV land can. Yeah. Those of us here can't. Hold well, on, everyone. Here, I was thinking if I join in person, <laughs> I'm not going to miss out. Yeah. Do we want to include uh, Town Hall? We could. No. Yep, screen two. Well, if you say Town Hall, then who's getting it to the planning board? Is it, you said it was at the collector's office? Yeah, Kim at the collector's office has the hard copies, and she's been directing folks to put them directly into the planning board mailbox. Okay. I left them with her since she assumed folks would be coming directly in with their water bills and probably questions about the, the announcement. And town hall collector's office. Or, or town hall. Do you think most people know COA is the same thing as the senior center? Senior center seems more... Yeah, I might do SR. Oh, just yeah, center. make sure it's good senior center. All right, right. Yeah, add it all. Um, and then one other thing this is what we're looking at on the screen, correct? Yes. Okay, so if I get this mm -hmm. and I want to do the survey, mm -hmm. I have to scan the QR code. Yeah. But if I'm not, but if I have a computer and mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this, would it make sense to put the actual link? So when I go to when I go to social media, I'm gonna put the link in the description. Um, but that's also a good point because we're gonna put it on the channel. So I could put the link onto the I, channel. I think it would be uh, I think it would be good on here too if we're gonna hand these things out. Yeah. In places that people might not be uh, as technologically advanced as others. Then okay. Yeah. I could do that. Um but in the meantime, for where got my handy dandy notebook here. <laughs> All right. So where's that? Where's this version going? Where it says car copies can be dropped off? Is that everywhere as we can? Or that was, that, that was going to be posted where we eat, you know, like five of these with. 
10 copies each of the hard copy survey at the whatever it is four or five um affordable housing developments in town the golden court vesta um what's the one next uh, to golden court bruce not brewster uh, berkway 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 yeah that's the berkway well green leaves yeah what what used to be green leaves i think it that's vesta now if i'm not yeah i think so yeah and then there's one the one behind Pizza Hut, which is Mountain View or something like that. No. No? No Mountain View? Uh, it's, it's something like that. I'll put Mountain View in a question mark. Well, Mr. You know, Dwyer would know. Oh, where he wants to be. Yeah. We know what you, you, as long as we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Whatever we call it won't matter as long as the project gets accomplished we don't care what it's called what the assessors know all the affordable housing places the assessor probably yeah right. okay yeah because i am going out tomorrow um to uh put up my digital equity equity survey stuff i could do same thing here mm -hmm. that would be great that would make sense so the one request from deb uh, mm -hmm. in the second uh block of text that last pause hold on um, you can just end the text at root nine here uh in the pair underneath survey middle paragraph yeah. where are we going just just where your cursor is, just make that uh, end at root nine. So delete the, so I'll just delete what is there back until it gets to root nine, it will be up along. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to see and that. that link. Uh, the URL. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm gonna put it here for what okay. sec. Um Kayla, it's up on the planning board side, yeah. That link. No, I haven't put it up yet. I was gonna add well, I don't know if this is on the agenda, but um if Survey we yes. if you wanted a separate smart growth committee page or you wanted it on the planning board page. Well, the the uh, flyer we're looking at says to visit the Hadley Planning Board web page to stay up to date. So probably makes sense to oh, okay have it at the planning board, just on the planning board, not a separate page. I'm to try to send it to you, but I don't know. It's all my uh, emails right here. It's surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash Hadley Smart Growth. I have it at my on my desktop, so I'll just change it there. I'll trust you. Yeah. All right. So I've got I've got um, an email from an older you know back in June from Bill Dwyer, Berkeway, Golden Court, Mountain View, and Winfield Senior. There's one, two, three, four. And then there's also DDS and DMH. Yeah, there's some note that those are not generally available to the public. Are those group homes of some sort, Mark? Uh, I think so. I think so. I think the DMH is. There's a few of those uh, buildings in town. One no. on 40 South Bay. Uh, There's one on High Meadow. Hey Road, yeah. Do you make copies here tonight? Because I have a master of the survey. We wanted to just go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'll right. get some. Well, I, after the meeting. Yeah. Time. And Randy will have some for you to take it from there. Okay. So basically, it looks like. 
One, two, three, four. Berkeley, Golden Court, Mountain View, and Winfield Senior. Berkeley has 12 units, Golden Court has 40, Mountain View has 25, and Winfield has 80. This is senior, so you may want to go ahead and print one for everybody at the senior um, development and a handful for the rest of the beginning. Mm -hmm. The good news is when we pair it with the flyer, all the surveys get pulled. At least there's something that says, hey, go here for a new copy or use this QR code. So, Alex, are you printing or do you still want me to print them and drop them off in your mailbox? Um, if you can print them, put them in my mailbox, that'd be helpful. Okay. Because I'll have, do it tomorrow you morning. Have, you have the, um, the, you have the, the copier that I don't, so. Okay. You remember... Alex, then you can bring some to the select board meeting Wednesday night yep. for me. Um, and do you mind sending me the digital file? I'll do that. Yeah. Thanks. Democracy in action. All right, um, thank you all for adding to our outreach on the survey. Yeah, that was wonderful. Th th thank you, everyone. Um, but we should probably discuss our next uh, strategy for outreach, which is um, conducting focus groups. Uh, that's partly why Alex joined us uh, to talk through how Hadley Media could be a part of that, um, the agenda, at this point, just says to consider dates and in, um, identify those that we want to invite. I'm going to share my screen. So, Alex, you could televise each of those, um, or at least re at least record them. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. I I would go record. Um, yep. it's just just because of the nature of it. Um, but we can definitely cover it. All right. And if any, you know, and we could even do something like if some, you know, if you have a, a camera recording it to go on the, on the website, mm -hmm. um, you could, when you're there, say, if you don't mind being in front of the camera, sit in these seats. If you want to be off camera, you can sit over there in case anyone has any sensitivity here. Mm -hmm. I guess, I'm, what, what, what is the purpose of these recordings? Because I'm, I'm a little concerned about, you know, recording a focus group that people well, copy is Frank. My thought, Deborah, was that if you don't go to it and you see it and you say, oh, I should have gone to that. I didn't know it was it was going to talk about that. I have an opinion. I'm going to try and make the next one now. That, that was my thought. Do you think it's more of a liability than a... I, I do. And I thought the purpose was internal to you so that we, you know, when we decide how to glean the information from these groups, we would have a recording as a reference. You know, I mean, it's always a question, how do you take notes? How do you record? How do you transcribe recordings? But I, so for that reason, if, you know, if we're using it for that reason as a reference for whoever is either transcribing or, you know, trying to take notes on what's happening, I can understand that, but I don't see it as something that should be publicized because okay. I think that would distort the, process i can see that any other I, I don't opinions disagree. Yeah, i don't disagree but I, i'll make a sort of a counterpoint just for consideration which is that uh prejudice and hate tend to thrive in the shadows and shine a light on it you might be a lot less likely to deal with the people who 
use, you know, bigotry and exclusionism and us versus them mentalities as a justification for their positions. So it, it's an incentive, you know, to speak openly and honestly, and, you know, your name's tied to it if you're on the record. It's just an argument for. Yeah. Well, I, I agree that it, to me, it makes sense to record it for the people that but what, what Mark, what you said originally, if, if I missed it and I can go back and watch it and understand what's going on, I mean, it's, it's kind of helping with the transparency of this because a lot of times the, these small groups like we're in get accused of not being out in the public eye, doing everything behind closed doors, which we're not. This is an open meeting. We're recording it. So, but still... The more we can put things out there, I th I think it's it's better for the public and better for us. I, I think that's that's a great point. I'll, you just inspired me, so I'll add that I think if we're asking people to volunteer for this, I think it's a reasonable expectation that they be prepared to be recorded, and that if you're not prepared to be recorded, then maybe your input shouldn't be part of the conversation. And just to put out another option, instead of instead of just blanket pop publishing it on the Hadley Media, what if we made it available by request? Much pain that would be a pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's on, that's only a pain for Alex. <laughs> It'd be easier to put up on YouTube because we also got, this is not the only thing we're doing too. And so. yeah. I think our participation could, could, could plummet though on some level. Yeah, uh, if we if we record it and kind of make it a stipulation that that you consent to be recorded during. Yeah, I think it's two different purposes. You know, I think if you want to have public panels in a sense like that, that's one thing. And I wouldn't call them focus groups. I would call them panels. You know, invited panels, and people agree that this is public and it's anyone can, you know, et cetera. I think we really want to. If we call it focus groups, it has a research. Um, it's, it's research to find out what people are really thinking, whether they say it nicely or not, and um, you know, and and that we would want them to speak more freely. Um, so I think it's just two different purposes, and sure. we should decide which purpose is more important to us, or you know, which, which yeah. one we're doing. I think. Yeah. Alex, I'm not that tech savvy, but if it were on your YouTube site, would it be searchable by, by you know, say hate groups? I mean, anything, I mean, anything we post can be, can be looked up by any hate group or any sort of group that would want to cause trouble. Um Um, there's weird people out there. I think in Granby, I'm not going to explain what what it was, but it was really weird. Um, there be there's playlists of meetings of, yeah. I'm not even going to get into it. I'll okay. talk about that. But right. um, how, how many people total are we considering participating in something like this? 20, 40, 30? Are we inviting people, or are we having an open meeting and people can come? I think it's open and we're trying to aim it at certain communities, hoping that as many of them as can and are interested will, will attend. So I don't think there's a anticipated number. Okay. Okay. I'm, leaning, I'm leaning towards recording it and telling them that it's for our record and that it will not be published just to put people at, at ease. Well, I think... I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea, Mark. I, I think something Randy said is really like sticking to my brain about transparency. And if this is supposed to be a launching point for our next yeah. you know, iteration of this effort, and we don't, we're not transparent about how we got the information we got or how we arrived right. at the conclusions we arrived at, anybody could look at that and say, well, I wasn't involved. So I don't know that I can trust you. You're forcing this down my throat. It doesn't matter how much honesty or integrity we have if we, if we don't you know, post the results. There's no proof of what we discussed. If we publish it, I can wait to publish it. So like maybe like a week or two after the actual focus group. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, every meeting that we have in this town is recorded for the most part. Most of them. People recorded. that come understand that. We've been doing it long enough that this is not something new. It's not something that they can say, you just started doing that at this meeting. And to everybody's point, I agree, it may influence people uh, what they what they have to say. But we have to take that chance, in my opinion. Um, you know, I've... 30 years ago, you wouldn't get me in front of this camera talking. Mm -hmm. I was scared to death of it. But now it's second nature. And it's not the end of the world. And I realize some people don't appreciate it. And it will limit what they will say because sometimes people don't know how to say things politely. Uh, but again, chance we take. And, and from my experience, when we put on, we bring out a new board for, and as part of our coverage, people do get used to it. They used to get used to being on camera. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Are we doing multiple like recordings of different focus groups, correct? I think so. Are we going to so like, I would, I would also kind of like wonder if, if we were to post it after, before like another focus group were to meet, then we could we almost sort of influence that focus group. Um, okay. From a research perspective, it just seems like they should all kind of not be released until after. Yeah. Well, we could do unlisted. That way, it's not it's not linked to the public. But if you have a if you have an individual link, you can see it on your own. Right. And then we can switch on the public after after the last um, focus group. Okay. Yeah, that makes some sense. I think we're honing in on a good answer. You know, it's I think if we're honing in on this, that's fine, but they are not focus groups. And I think it's misleading to call them focus groups. I think it's fine to do it, but we should call them what they are, which is more like, you know, panels, in, you know, panels by interest groups or, you know, mini meetings many public meetings. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what the title should be, but but they're really not focus groups. Focus groups is a research group that it's selected. It normally has a certain number of people in it. It's not an open invitation and it's not publicized in these ways. So okay. again, that's fine. I just wouldn't call them focus groups. Maybe it's a focused forum. <laughs> That could be. And just so it's clear that it's public, it's recorded, it will be open and shared. Um, Focused you know. pub public forum. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't think we need to get too hung up on what we call it, but if, if calling it something else will get us over this line, let's just pick something. Kyle wrote stakeholder panels, which sounds appropriate to me. Does anybody have any objection? What was, the, what was that? I didn't catch it. Stakeholder panels. Stakeholder panels. Oh. Stakeholder panel discussions. You sure? I'm sure. No. Yeah. Or or would public forum suit you better, Deborah? Well, it's not what suits me. It's what we intend. Like, are are these going to be invited panels where we decide who those stakeholders are and we invite them? I, I think I was hearing some conversation that they would be open to the open to anybody and more people would be encouraged to come. I, right. I feel that they need to be open to the public. I don't. I would not feel comfortable inviting right. certain people because that's going to really get us in trouble. Right. So then it wouldn't be called stakeholder panels if anyone can come. You know. What would you call it? What would make you comfortable? I, again, it's not my comfort. It's what we're really doing. So if these are public, if they're public, um, you know, what did Mark say? Public for you know many. Forums, yeah. Yeah, forums. Public forums. All that. All and, we're, and and instead of saying focal groups, we're just choosing different locations that we're hoping will pull from those particular quadrants of our community. Is it the location that's going to shift, Mark, or is it the topic? Like, when we first talked about these groups, there were different topics, like you know, or your perspectives, developer perspectives. 
between your perspectives, there was like a list of five or six of them that um, that we came up with. Is, is that what everyone here is still thinking, that each one would have a different topic focus like that? Yeah, how did we leave that? Uh, Kyle, is that on your sheet if you scroll down? Yeah. Um, initially, we had talked about, um, I had understood it to be more of um, an invited group of stakeholders. Um, we had identified the business council as a group to connect with the council on aging, potentially the various department heads of uh, town. Uh, we'd identified the agricultural commission. Uh, we'd identified two groups from the school community, either the PTO or the Hadley Mothers Club. Uh, we still were asking questions about renters and young families, and someone had thrown out the name Hadley Learns, but there wasn't any discussion about that one. Uh, yeah, Hadley Learns, cool. which uh, renters. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It is more of an online, it's almost more of like a listserv. I don't know, do they actually have Zoom meetings anymore or anything like that? Well, I mean, I think it would be great to invite these various groups, but to an open meet, a, a, a public right. meeting, not right. uh, just the, those individual entities, even if it's several meetings. I, I just don't think that's Right. I think they should come, be invited, but allow whoever wants to be there to be there. I didn't realize we'd gotten up to six, you know, bullet points. Is there some way we can combine, like get it down to three? So we have two at one, two at another, or is that? Could, could I ask, because maybe I missed this part of the conversation. What What's the intended format? Like I, I know we've talked about breaking out into separate separate groups to answer questions and then reporting out or something. But um, is this like you know we get eighty people in the room and we divide them up evenly and then move from group to group? But what what was the vision? I I don't know that we've ever really defined it. I guess in my mind, I thought it might be something with like uh, like a ten or twenty minute opening. Uh, explanation and then and then just a question and answer what were you thinking kyle um i'd say a lot less time on an introduction but mostly i was picturing this as um more of like a round table with a short list of questions so a five to ten minute intro this is why we're here and then yeah. Round table. Hmm. We're trying to give as much time to each person to sh share a perspective, mm -hmm. and gathering as wide a perspective as possible. Um, it seems like we're talking to the third. We had three. I thought we had three outreach ideas: the survey, the focus groups, and then a larger forum. It sounds like right now we're kind of jumping to the larger forum and folding in some of the ideas that we had talked about originally for the focus groups. Is that, Kyle, is no, that? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry if I've led to that. I just lost track of stuff because I have so, so much going on, but I think you're right there. I think Kyle did say there's, there's a survey, there's the, there's the first engagement and the second engagement. So that's true. So this, this is the first outreach, right? Uh, this would be the second wave of outreach of engagement, the right? Go, oh, because the survey is the first, right? Yeah. So this initially was imagined as you know one or two groups of particular stakeholders uh, by invitation. I can completely uh, understand and appreciate the concerns about transparency and the issues with that. Um, so I think if we create uh, a, a small number of thematic public forums, making sure that we're trying to engage with uh, particular stakeholders to at certain forums, but keeping it open to the public, uh, we can cater the questions to be um, of course, with a, a, a 
an identical introduction, but we could cater the questions to be more focused on a, a kind of a theme within smart growth that we think is of most interest or most um, import, however you all want to define that. Um, one thought, just listening the conversation about how this could be uh, publicized or recorded, I think um, uh, some of the quick feedback comments I did read this morning, there were some pretty interesting generalizations about uh, business owners and what they need. And so I think um, you know, at least having a, a forum focusing on the business and the commercial needs of um, a smart growth district would be important so that non-business owners can get a sense of what, you know, people that are wanting more patronage or clientele or, you know, what they're thinking about. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we could probably get this down to like three if we want to do an open like thematic forum, get it down to three topics. Um, maybe having a single or two questions that are uniform. So you're getting some feedback that are that's um, from all groups and then maybe two or three questions that are very focused on the topic that you want to prioritize for the, the meeting. So one, well, one thing about like focus groups that's a little different than a forum is that it, you know, with a smaller group, it, it gives people who might be a little quieter or might be a little more reserved, more room to speak and be involved. Uh, so that, that's getting me wondering if like the topics you're talking about, Kyle, if we did, you know, if it was a round table, but we did breakout groups, like we do this in, uh, you know, end user sessions with clients on the architecture world, you know, where we could just collect a bunch of people who are stakeholders who have different levels of involvement. We do breakout groups, they discuss amongst themselves, so they feel heard and their, you know, their thoughts start to bounce off each other. And then we return to the big group and we'll generally report out either a person from each breakout group or if someone from KBCP or is leading or like, you know, someone takes what we distill from each group, ports out, and then there's a, a whole conversation across the table. And if, you know, people aren't really comfortable being on camera, that's a good way because you don't really, she usually would like deep report stuff like this. We don't usually record breakout groups, right. but we record the actual main event. Right. That gets messy and muddy, but it seems like it might be a way to bridge so that we get that, you know, the small group getting people's voices, which is the whole point, while also, you know, having sort of the larger, more public, you know, or at least open to the public kind of meeting. Sounds good. I do think at one point, I think we did talk about having at least two, if not three dates staggered over two or three weeks since we're doing this when a lot of people are going on vacations. Um, so that if you missed one date because you were away, you could attend another one. And I think that way, if we combined, say, you know, two focus groups or whatever you want to call them, two target groups in each evening, um, if their group was conflicted with their availability, they could go to another group's target night, if that makes any sense. It does. Are you thinking, Mark, that each each night would have like a, a different cohort or a different topic? Or yeah, different like, topic? like, you know, if, if we said we're targeting um, the Hadley business community and the municipal department heads, um during the day on this week and then the next week we're having an evening with council on aging and uh what do i see next the agricultural commission or whatever and what you know on the following week that could be a night one so that there's 
some are during the day, some are at night. You know, I think the, you know, the department heads and the business makes sense to be during the business day. So they don't have to come back to Hadley if they're not, you know. Just ideas. And again, I'm not speaking with my chair hat. I'm just speaking as a member tossing out ideas on the table. Well, we'd tell you if we didn't like it, Mark. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I trust you. We're right next to Amherst, where only the H is silent. Is there a, like a theme we could organize the groups around to decide who goes to what? Like economics would obviously lend itself to the business uh, council and department heads maybe. And then like school and, and council on aging might be more community-based. I don't know if there's like a theme we can apply to each one. So folks, yeah. you know, members of the public who want to attend can choose which seems the most appropriate for them. Right. community and social uh doesn't that seems a little disingenuous i don't have a better <laughs> a better way to describe it I'm kind of curious as to how we would lump in agricultural into any of them because i mean the whole nature of this is to kind of i mean is to preserve a lot of agricultural land. Like that's kind of what Hadley is dealing with and why houses are as expensive as they are. Um, so I don't know. They seem like a pretty important stakeholder. So yeah, I was gonna say it probably feels like some of these probably deserve to be in both. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least the ones well, that have a true, well, you know, connection to both. Yeah. Well my expectation is that they're not exclusive. We're just picking, you know, we're kind of focusing on these, but there's no reason if you can't make, if you have a conflict, go to another one. It's not like we don't want to hear from your, from you if you couldn't make it to your primary target group. And you, they can come as a member of the public to any and all. Right, right. No matter if they're a member of the target group or not, they can still attend. It's a good way to think about it. So then like the invitation piece of this is really more saying, hey, business council, you know, hey, ag council, like we want your voices, send somebody to the room, but we'll have the conversation or topics of discussion will be focused. The participation is open. So if they can be invited to both, members of the public can come to both, mm -hmm. but we'll be focusing the questions on a specific area for each night. Does that kind of solve your concern there? About yeah. Involvement. And I think if we have our entire list of all the target group question areas and someone shows up from that other one, well, if you couldn't make it to that one, we asked this, this, and then, you know, so that person can give their input, whether it, you know, they shouldn't feel tongue-tied that, well, I, I want to talk about this issue. Oh, well, that was last week. Sorry. We don't care anymore. I see it as the, the target people speaking, and then after that, it goes where it goes. Right, exactly. It's organic. Yes. Okay, so in terms of formatting this these events, are we thinking that it's an introduction to the project, uh, an overview of the breadth of what smart growth could be, um, maybe a little bit of kind of priming the conversation, depending on the topic of the evening or the event? 
And then do we have a whole group conversation with those that we are wanting to hear from before breakout or do we just break out and then everyone comes back for a full report? this might sound hokey but I've, I've done this in a in strategic meetings before where you have a short intro and then you have like let's say you had three or four questions you have three or four easels with a big uh, tw 24 inch wide 36 inch high um, piece of paper with a question written at the top and you let people walk around and write thoughts or concerns under each one and they all get to you know they all can mill around and, and add their thoughts or questions and then you as as a group look at all the boards I don't know I was going to actually propose something similar, Mark, except uh, instead of the giant paper, I've used post-its uh, as a okay. colored post-it. And it, the only thing yeah. that does is it, it makes it a little bit easier for people to you know, right. move around, write their thing, and then stick it up on the wall. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I guess maybe as a, as a proposal to answer Kyle's question about the format, maybe what we could do is the intro, you know, sort of prime them, as you said, um, have the four or so questions up on the screen or on a board or easel or whatever, um, and then do like 15 minute breakout groups and just say, all right, we're gonna divide up into four groups, talk amongst yourselves, come back to the table and then look at the post-its or the easels or whatever and start to you know, ask for input. You know, Tell me why you wrote this or you know, does anybody wanna talk about this point? What did you say? Or you know, why did you put this up here? That's, that's a way to make it a more sort of broad round table out of that breakout group. I'm getting excited. We're really setting the bar high for future committees. <laughs> yeah. so, so just to repeat, you, Justin, just to make sure I get it. You're actually suggesting do a break, do the breakout before you would do a report back on the kind of big things that everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And for context, the, re the reason I say this is just in my experience, when you have large groups of people, the loudest voices dominate the conversation and the quietest voices contribute almost nothing. So I found breakout groups is a great way of getting sort of the quieter people out of their shell and more comfortable talking about an issue. And even if they don't bring it back to the larger group, somebody might have heard what they said and then communicate that back. So it's it's, a, it's an empowerment thing more than anything, but yeah, if we yeah. do 15, 20 minute breakout groups, that's usually enough time. Yeah. Rock on. And then so these breakout groups, we'd imagine a, a different set of questions for the conversation, not necessarily. Or just a deeper dive on the questions that were on the boards. I don't know. I think it'd be the same questions. Or what's on the boards and see where it yeah, right, through. where it takes you. Right. And are, are the questions on the board specific to each forum? Are they the ones that are focused in on the theme for that evening? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like let's say we had 10 questions and really three of them applied to this nice group. <clears throat> or this day's group or four of them, you know, you have four boards and maybe there's a fifth board that says everything else. So they're not excluded from commenting on the other questions, but we're focusing you on these three or four. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Be interesting to see where the sticky notes end up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good thing we have an unlimited PBPC budget. Uh, I don't know if that's the right qualifier. <laughs> but uh, Kyle's got money hanging out his back pocket over here. I can see. It. Yeah, yeah, that's about so I sit fun. We might have to have a smart growth bake sale. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, oh, okay. Just thinking about. Scheduling, uh, I, I 
personally, I think this is a format that we can make work. Um, um, I think we we at PBPC have conducted very similar events. I think you know if need be, we can have staff available to step in um, and support. I think the question that I have right now is uh, just looking at the date and thinking about when we're going to try to have these three events scheduled. I'm stuck. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm at this point assuming three events staggered over two weeks when that could work for folks. Recognizing that school is going to start in three weeks from Wednesday, and then that's followed by a three-day weekend with Labor Day. Um, so do we need to wait for the survey results to come back before we do this, or are we doing them simultaneously? I think that's a great question. I I could see value in moving ahead without survey feedback. I also see value in allowing the survey to help direct some of these questions yeah. i think i think leaving doing it after the survey is probably the way to go because we'll at least we can direct the questions that way right and kind of have an understanding of what we're, we're, we're diving into and that'll let school get started people settle down in that respect and then after that i hear what you're saying kyle about everything but we've all got stuff right and let's see plan it and whoever can go can go Alex I do to want to point out that the digital equity, our consultant wants to do our Charlottes in September and October. Um, yeah, I don't, they don't have, we don't have dates yet because we had our first meeting last week, but I just want to point that out. We're also kind of simultaneously doing everything <laughs> with you guys right now. Um, <clears throat> you all have a like a number of those events that you're gonna we're doing one you're just doing okay yeah they we they they only gave us one okay so somewhere in september october there's gonna be a big shred yeah okay. that's good one. i'm sorry alex what is that event you've got we're um our consultant for digital equity is gonna have us do a charrette oh. in either september or october okay um and we're also doing surveys right now okay I think I think it's wise to wait for the survey um, and just looking at what we've already tossed out as themes, you know, recognizing yeah. that the, the business, the economics of smart growth is going to be a, a particular uh, point of interest uh, and having a little bit of kind of preliminary feedback from the surveys, uh, taxes are the most important topic of concern or inquiry based on our 70 or so responses from earlier today. So I'm thinking that there might be a third topic or the third theme might be something related to like municipal capacity. It's like, what is the town mm -hmm. actually capable of supporting or, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that's going to get into your topics of infrastructure and tax base and whatnot. I guess we should have seen that coming. The taxes would be a big yeah. concern when we included it with a tax bill. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, what would we call that? Like taxes, uh, the whole like uh, governmental government government budget, town town. I don't know how. What, what, what's the, how do we bundle that theme into something that somebody looks at it and says, "I want to go to that." They don't have the foreign loan taxes. I don't think we'll get any of these. Cost to the town or something yeah. to that effect or effect, a financial effect on the town. Because it could, in theory, it should be a good thing. If it's played out right, right. it's going to have a, a positive impact on the town's tax base, not a negative one. So, what about something more positive like, you know, Hadley town growth or future of Hadley or um, fiscal growth. Yeah, not 
just fiscal though. I mean, it's town perspectives, or I, I wouldn't want to limit it to just fiscal. It's, you know, people are concerned about infrastructure. They're also concerned about what kind of town we have and are we open to, you know, do we have housing that keeps us open to having a more diverse population, all of that. So maybe something just about town profile or town impacts um, change. Okay. Um, I can offer some wordsmithing at our next meeting. Try to yeah give some off um, options and keep the conversation going. I just do want to note the time. It is ten after six, um, so we got another four hours. Another four hours if Maybe we want. You do. I'm on the clock, so it's whatever you all want. Um, <laughs> Randy, you don't have any more weddings to get to, right? Not tonight. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. I just got a text. Yeah, I got to be there in 10 minutes. Oh, <laughs> My neighbor's getting married. With a shotgun, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sounds like this, though, where we can table until next meeting and we'll look at a refined or revised yeah, version. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yes, this has been a, a helpful conversation. So thank you all. Um, I'm happy to move forward with the next agenda item, which would be discussing the next committee meeting time and topic, uh, following the schedule as we have it. That would put us two weeks from today. Should be about the Monday the 19th. Yeah. Monday the 19th at five o'clock. Uh, that'll give us, that'll put us right in the middle of our um, survey period. Uh, and then just keeping in mind that the first Monday of September is Labor Day. So just want to think, um, I think we'd be able to postpone all the way to the third Wednesday of September. Um, that would actually give me a week to digest, digest and synthesize and summarize the survey if we close it on yeah. the night. So, that makes sense. Uh, if we want to go ahead and put those two dates on the calendar for everybody, our next meeting would be when Monday, excuse me, Monday the 19th of August. And then after that would be Monday the 16th of September. 19th and 16th, okay. And then um, uh, actions for folks to complete this week. Thank you, Alex, again, for updating this little flyer and sharing that yep. uh, with our affordable housing developments. Um, I've got a physical copy of the survey that I'm going to make some, some for Randy to take home tonight. So well, Kayla's going to print some out. All right. So Kayla's going to, Kayla's yeah. going, to Kayla's going to get them and then Alex will bring them to me on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. So then that's all going to work out. So great. Uh, and then, uh, I'll keep tabs on the library and collector's office and, um, senior center to collect hard copies. Thank you all. I'm I'm on vacation, as you can see from my attire. Yeah, you're just at home, Mark. <laughs> trying to make it look like you're on vacation. I actually squeezed in an hour or two on the beach between all the rainstorms we've had. Nice. You got everything we need, Kyle, for tonight? Well, that's all I have on the agenda. I need to hand it back over to whoever's chairing this before I, I would. Uh, I would let Andrew continue. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, just a quick question. I, did we get uh, extension on the grant funding? Oh, oh yeah. So, um, sorry, I completely forgot about that. So, uh, thanks to support from the select board, uh, planning board, and the Affordable Housing Trust. We successfully submitted an application to the Executive Office of Environment and Energy Affairs, or sorry, Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, so that was received. Uh, I'm anticipating a decision and notice October, realistically. Hopefully September, but I'm thinking more likely October. Great, yeah. Thanks so uh, we requested, we leveraged the full budget and requested an additional $22,500 nice. uh, to be spent 
throughout the next calendar year. We didn't want it. We could have gone all the way in through fiscal year 26 into June 26, but we figured we wanted to have things ready for the planning board for town meeting 2026 at the earliest. So fingers crossed that would uh, allow us to spend out this budget focusing on engagement uh, and then have funds to hopefully with everyone's uh, willingness and participation to keep the steering committee moving forward uh, into the next calendar year uh, so that we can actually start drafting bylaw language that re reflects what the community wants. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Good, good question. Any other questions? Any other concerns before we table the rest? I would offer a motion to adjourn if the acting chair, Andrew, would accept it. Yeah, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.